Are you curious about bodies, pleasure, and possibilities? And what about curious about what others are up to on the planet when it comes to pleasure, sex, and play? Have you considered what pleasure can do for your life, your body, and your bank account? Do you know something magical, delightful, and out of this world orgasmic is not only possible for you, but totally available to you? If you're ready to be the magical, sexual, sexy beast you know you can be, and you just need the tools to get there, you're in the right place. Now, here's the host of The Pleasure Zone, sensual movement artist, relationship and sex alchemist, Milica Yelenich. Welcome, my sweet pleasure seekers. Tonight we are talking about springtime fetishes. Now, for some of you, you might be like, what's so special about springtime, springtime fetishes? And at first I wrote this and I thought, maybe there isn't a lot to say about springtime fetishes. But then I realized there really is. And there are some fetishes that are absolutely more suited to the spring or they might be more accessible in the spring. So we'll be talking all about those today. And, you know, especially if you have a kink around anything that's floral or plant related, what a great time to have a kink for gardening and <laughs> lots of other fun things. So we will be talking about all of that today. And some kinks can be enjoyed all year round, of course, but I do think that there are some that are more better suited for the spring. So if you're someone who likes to get your kink on in the springtime, especially you might have a kink for things like flowers or sunshine, mud, getting dirty outside, exhibitionism, because what a great season to get, get naked, um, <laughs> voyeurism to see the people who are getting naked as well. Uh, you know, different clothes that might be available in the spring that aren't available in colder weather. So things like even, you know, showing the midriff off or clothes that just happen to show more body off, you know, as we move into warmer weather. There's also the fetish of anything to do with wetness, like rain or water sports, if you guys know what I'm talking about. If you're into fetishes and kinks, you'll know what I mean when I say water sports. Um, I'm going to say it that way so that, you know, the show doesn't get... Uh, a whole bunch of uh, algorithms chasing it down. <laughs> so sometimes, you know, when we've been hiding out all winter and we've been just, you know, you know, wearing our cozies, I'm still wearing a cozy sweater if you're watching on video because it's a little chilly where I am right now for me. And, you know, if, if you're just getting into the warmer weather and you're starting to feel like you're coming out of your hiding could be coming out of your hiding in so many ways. You could be coming out of your hiding as in you're awakening some part of yourself, some curiosity, some sexual curiosity, some fetish curiosity might be waking up too. So if you've been hibernating symbolically and it's been you've been in the season of winter for a while in your life, maybe not just the last few months, but maybe you've been in the season of hibernating for the last five or 10 or 40 years. And now you're coming into the spring of your life where things are waking up and you're waking up and things are becoming interesting and your interests are growing and maybe even your sex drive is, is growing. <laughs> so after so many years, you might feel like now's the time to wakey wakey and get into the springtime of your life and start to enjoy that season, the season of your life of spring. So hopefully it's not just for anybody who is listening. We're not just taking this as in the time of the year. We're ta taking it as a time in your life where you start to feel more awakened. Your senses are awakened. Your desire to be alive is awakened. Your enjoyment to watch things grow and come to life is also awakened. We'll be talking about all of that. My name is Milica Yelenich, and I am a sex and intimacy coach, a holistic health practitioner. I work with people all the time on assisting them to get their relationships back on track. They can bring more pleasure into their personal life and the lives of those that they have intimacy with. And also through health, looking at it for multi, like a multiple layered perspective, a holistic perspective, where 
we're not just looking at your symptoms. We're looking at your whole life. What's going on in your whole life? And a lot of times our personal relationships have an impact on our health and on our mental health as well as our physical health. So when we can get things straightened up in ourselves, then we can get things straightened up in our relationships. And one of the things to look at and play with is how we can be more playful and enjoy all kinds of things related to um, even things related to kinks and fetishes and have some fun. So tonight we're going to be talking all about springtime kinks, springtime fetishes, and if you are new to the whole world of fetishes, I encourage you to go back to the last episode I did, which was called the five the five languages, five fetish languages, kind of like the five languages of love. And you can start to see maybe where you do have some kinky things going on that you desire. And you can start to welcome that more into your life and into your relationships, plural. Because maybe you've got more than one. Maybe you're polyamorous. You can go back and listen to my episode from last year on polyamory. I've been on for nearly 10 years, guys. So if you are listening uh, in the future, you might be listening after the date of uh, my anniversary of the show. So coming up to 10 years soon. So you're going to find a lot of content on a whole bunch of streaming platforms and a whole bunch of podcast platforms, over 75 podcast platforms and over 300 TV video platforms. So go find your way to enjoy listening or viewing this content. Uh, for those of you who are just listening and not viewing, just know I am not wearing anything kinky. So, you know, if you come over with the expectation that I am dressed in something kinky, I am not. Although one day uh, I might just do that. Although we tend to be on a lot of the TV stations that have uh, some more regulations. I'm already on the verge of being risky, so we might not do that. One of the first top ones I'd like to bring up on in terms of springtime fetishes kinks um, is one to do with flowers. And I've talked, I had an entire show dedicated to flowers and one of the episodes I did way back in the day I think it was my first or second year having the show it was called Golden Showers Bring May Flowers. And as a result of Golden Showers Bring May Flowers, I had uh, a, a listener write to me and we've actually become somewhat of pen pals over the years. And so it's been very cool. We've even met on a video. So it's um, it's very fun when I really enjoy when the when you, the listeners, the viewers who really love the content, get in contact with me, uh, really love meeting you, really love getting on video calls as well. So I can see your faces and then I get to learn more about what you're interested in. So last year I also did an entire episode based on belly button fetishes and springtime and summertime are a great time for belly button fetishes, especially if you like seeing belly buttons because they seem to come out of hiding. <laughs> So those belly buttons that have been hidden for a while come out of hiding. So that's another you know thing to think about too is some of the springtime fetishes are ones that uh, they might start in the spring, but they definitely continue through the summer and sometimes even into the fall. So I'm just calling them springtime because this is usually when they wake up and we can start getting active on them after that winter of hibernating or after that season of your life of hibernating. What a great time to bring some in. So let's get specific on flower fetishes. There are so many ways that you can enjoy flowers and have, uh, have a, you know, a kink experience with flowers. So let's start with some of the most obvious, which would be smelling flowers and touching flowers. And sometimes it'll be specific flowers. You might have a specific, uh, connection to roses or you might have a specific connection to lilacs which I'm about one week off of having my lilacs bloom I I tried to connect this show to actually when I would have lilacs bloom so I could have them in the background but it didn't quite work out this year so 
you might just like looking at them. You might like examining them. Some people like to look right deep into the flowers and see the stamen and look at it and kind of examine it. And some people just like to touch it, you know, whether it's touching the stem or the petals. Some people like to discuss the anatomy, we'll call it, the, the different parts of the flower and just the words that describe all the different parts of a flower can be highly erotic for people as well. Like the word stamen can be really highly erotic for people. So knowing that sometimes language itself and describing certain things that are connected to spring can be super erotic. Depends on who you are, right? So if you do love flowers, I am so happy for you if you're in the Northern Hemisphere right now, because what a great time to be experiencing all of the springtime growth for flowers. I've got some flowers like hyacinths popping in my garden right now and tulips and um, a whole bunch of other little things. Irises are starting to come up. And sometimes even being botanical about it and naming names of flowers and describing the perfumes that come out of flowers can be really highly erotic as well. And some people with also with uh, flower fetishes is purely for the smell. Some is for the touch. Some is having the flowers given to them or giving flowers to others, putting flower petals on a bed putting flower petals on your naked body or stroking your body with flowers, using it as a stimulating tool. Just be sure that if you are doing that, that the person isn't allergic to the flowers and make sure that any wasps and bees are not in the flowers before you go rub them on a body so the person's not getting bitten. <laughs> Just some fair warnings. Things that you might not have thought about. Uh, so... Some things that also could be very fetish related with flowers is licking them, eating them, um, any of the senses really, photographing them can be, and some people even find it highly erotic to watch uh, flower videos that are time-lapsed where you can see the flower uh, springing open. And so you can see as it's going from a bud till it's fully bloomed, that can be really erotic for people in the same way that watching like a penis have an erection can be highly erotic for some people. The same thing is true for flowers in bloom for those who have flower fetishes. And, you, you know, you can take it to so many different levels too, where you could even have it where it's ha just having them in your home, feeling surrounded by um, like the company of flowers being, uh, you know, I think I have so many scenarios running through my head right now. <laughs> so I'm going to break it down to all the, to the five main senses of how you experience flowers through touch, taste, smell, sight, and uh, sound. So listening to flowers, maybe too, blowing in the wind or songs about flowers or words about flowers, saying all those botanical things about flowers, or giving them human qualities, like, oh, look at that stem on that, or, you know, instead of calling it a stem, you know, you might want to call it something else. So trying not to get myself uh, kicked off of any of our video platforms or audio platforms, but, you know, get creative, because flowers can be fairly um, both phallic and also they can be very much representative of yonis, depending on how you look at the petals. Um, there is actually an artist who refers to yonis, or we'll call it the vulva, uh, as petals. And there's some really cool art that that was done that has vulvas look like incredible just incredible flowers. So I think Georgia O'Keeffe also did some that were a series that looked very, that were very erotic flowers that were representative of vulvas. So you can see them in different ways. It could be live flowers or pictures of them, videos of them. You can enjoy them in many different ways. And in the same family with plants, you know, there are, as plants are popping and new things are coming out in springtime, you might find it highly erotic to see things like buds growing on trees 
or you might find even just a, you know things springing from seeds to be really erotic watching the leaves uh, of like new lettuce come out of the ground might be amazing for you and titillating for you you know it might bring you ideas and you might want to get yourself muddy in the garden to get all dirty so we're, we will talk about some things too related to gardening and uh, fetishes related to gardening because sometimes people just think they like to garden but they don't realize that maybe maybe they enjoy it in ways they didn't realize they enjoyed it or maybe they didn't realize that hey they're gardening and they can enjoy it in different ways so today we're talking all about springtime kinks i hope you guys are having fun Remember to stick around. You're listening to The Pleasure Zone here on Inspired Choices Network, and we'll be right back after this commercial. Are you secretly a voyeur, wondering what's going on in other people's sex lives? What if now is the time for a totally different sexual evolution? Are you interested in people who are pioneers of different sexual and pleasurable practices? Lean in now with Melitza Yelenich where she will entice you and your body to know your own Pleasure Zone. On the Pleasure Zone radio show with sensual movement artist Melitza Yelenich, you'll receive tools, inspiration, and a foundation to allow yourself to receive more in your sex life and quite possibly other areas of your life as well. Listen for the Pleasure Zone with Melitza every Monday at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, 7 p.m. Central Time, 6 p.m. Mountain Time, and 5 p.m. Pacific Time on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. Are you a subject matter expert? Are you here to share your expertise with an audience waiting to hear from you in only the way you can deliver? Are you ready to have your voice amplified across the airwaves? Inspired Choices Network has a global radio platform streaming to millions of people across the world. Professionally produced and supported by an accomplished team every step of the way, you can broadcast from anywhere in the world knowing your voice matters and we ensure it is delivered with ease and efficiency. Eager to hear your message, the world awaits. Contact us today to become an Inspired Choices Network radio host. Email become a host at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. This is The Pleasure Zone with sensual movement artist Melitza Yelenich. To participate in the program today, join our live studio audience in our chat room at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. You can also make the choice to ask or comment by email, info at melitzayelenich.com. Now, back to the program. Welcome, my sweet pleasure seekers. Tonight, I'm going to be sharing with you some fetishes or kinks that you might be aware of, you might be aware of, and then I'm going to share with some with you that you might not have even ever realized existed. So in the first segment, we talked about the fetish for flowers, which is actually fairly common. Um, and so I wanted to kind of dedicate some time to that. There are also fetishes for other plants in general and different things with plants. So um, I know somebody who has a really unique kink. And so if they're listening tonight, this one's for you. I'm not going to name your name, but... This one's for you. And so one of a really unique kink, which is all about cleaning leaves. So whether it's vacuuming them or wiping them down, uh, it, it is a kink related to leaves on plants. And so that might be something that if you've never realized it, you might, if you find yourself watching videos of cleaning and people wiping leaves and you, you find yourself doing it over and over and over again, and you find you really enjoy it, and then you find yourself horny, you might have a kink for this, or a fetish for this, whatever terminology you want to use. So another one is spring cleaning. And there's a reason, guys, why there's so many videos on YouTube that are dedicated to cleaning, whether it's cleaning the yard, uh, clearing all the stuff away, or cleaning houses, you know, I love watching the Midwest Cleaner and Ari Katarina because they are amazing cleaners and their videos are fantastic on YouTube, as well as if you don't know them, go watch them. They're fabulous cleaners and they always leave us satisfied, right? There's this satisfaction that comes from uh, a cleaning, especially a, 
a spring kind of spring cleaning effect where everything gets cleaned thoroughly. So whether you're doing the spring cleaning in the winter or you're doing it in the spring, you know, which they used, it was very traditional to do it in the spring, it's getting that deep clean happening can be so erotic for people and they they might not even realize why they're so obsessed with it. So there are also lots of videos on deep cleaning cars and carpets and dogs and like the deep cleaning and the clearing away. There's become a fascination with this. I do think, and I do know that there are people watching these videos, not just for the sake of, hey, that's great. Look at the results. But they're like really turned on by it. So amazing that they have content that's free on different platforms where they can watch cleaning videos that absolutely get them stoked going and turned on. There's also uh, spring cleaning videos, we'll call them spring cleaning uh, videos. There's uh, There are some really great uh, guys who do yard work videos all over YouTube as well. And those ones are um, you know, they're cutting down hedges, cutting grass, taking, cleaning out gutters and all that kind of stuff, power washing, you know, so anything that is like related to the cleaning of, of old mess, that can be really kinky for people. Sometimes it's making a mess, but sometimes it's cleaning the mess and seeing the end result. And sometimes it's being in the role play of the person who's, you know, you could be playing um, more of a sub dom role play where the dom has you cleaning their garden for them or their house for them and doing this thorough deep clean. Now, you might be doing it from from a kink as well, right? But these things can also just be, you know, the person's just cleaning the yard, but it's not their kink. But the people watching the voyeurs watching these videos might be highly turned on by this. So those lucky voyeurs watching the spring cleaning and the yard cleaning and all those cleaning videos that are out there, you know, cleaning your purse and vacuuming it videos and it turns you on. And, you know, maybe you're vacuuming buckets that had stuff in them and all kinds of things, cleaning out fridges, all of that could get you guys going if that's your thing right and that's beautiful that you have access to it this is stuff that probably 30 40 years ago you'd have to find really specific magazines that would have maybe images of these kinks or really specific porn videos that would have these kinks so the world has opened up in so many ways. And with that, access to the different varieties of, uh, of information we're getting and uh, resources that we have for accessing things that are fetish related is pretty phenomenal. So you might find that there are things you never even considered as a turn on for you, but they end up being a turn on. So, so you know, sometimes it could be um, clothing related where you're cleaning out closets and things. Uh, and it's, you know, maybe you're really turned on by that, or maybe somebody's turned on by wearing, uh, coming and grabbing your stuff and wearing it because they get turned on by that. Hey, Whatever floats your boat. So, yeah, spring cleaning. I just think there's so many different variations on the spring cleaning, whether it's washing windows or seeing somebody wash windows, playing the role of the maid or the cleaning person to the person watching them clean. You can play a lot of scenarios into the spring cleaning scenario. One of the ones, especially with gardening, could be getting muddy, getting dirty in the garden um, can be also a fetish for somebody who, for somebody who has that fetish, this can be a fabulous time of year. You can be walking down the road watching people garden and it's like your favorite thing is right there in front of you. And I think that's one of the most fun things about kinks fetishes that you, 
actually probably have access to a lot of the things you really enjoy just out in the world that people do all the time. And you don't even have to say anything. You just get to enjoy one of them. And my nose is twitching. So I'm just tapping into that. One of them is probably the most unusual one that I've ever talked about on this show. And it has to do with your nose. And this is the kind of season for spring allergies, but also kind of moving out of colds. The winter for colds, this one's great for that. But I'm thinking more like spring allergies. Sneezing. There are huge quantities of people who are into sneezing fetishes. So whether it's hearing the satisfaction of a good sneeze come out, or whether it's a, a sneeze that's accompanied by an orgasm, whether it's somebody now I'm just like just desiring to like touch my nose all over the place. So if whoever's out there who really needed that, that's for you. Um, touch could be touching your nose, blowing your nose, wiping your nose, all the things related to noses. If that really floats your boat, or if you're a person who really gets turned on by dirty hankies, you might be, there you go. That one's for you. And that one's one you can see everywhere. Although I'm sure you were kind of like disappointed when people had masks on and you didn't see it. But now that, you know, we have less population wearing masks, the chances are you're going to see more sneezers out there. You're going to see more nose wiping out there and you're going to enjoy yourself with all the nose, uh, the nose and sneeze fetish stuff that you've got happening. So enjoy it. And you see it everywhere. Like it's, it's on TV, you'll see sneezes, but you're going to see a lot walking around um, you know walking around especially with pollen in the air so i'm happy for you guys who have fetishes for sneezing because what a season for that so we've got another one that is maybe maybe i just made it up i'm not sure it's maybe real maybe made up but i'm going to go with it's real because i believe in my heart of hearts is if you can think of it it probably exists and it's probably a fetish so one of the other things I was thinking about, as um, as a lot of you who are avid listeners know, I live on 45 acres of land in, uh, in Canada. And right now we have wild food growing in the forest. And one of the wild foods we have is wild leeks. And so for somebody who's kind of into the, the dirty girl or the dirty boy or the like the dirty person, um, who smells like if you're into like uh, smelly stinky stuff and smelling like garlic or anything like that wild leeks are amazing to make you smell so whether you've eaten them raw which will absolutely make you smell for days or whether you're eating them cooked and it's going through your body and you smell like it um if you have that fetish you know visit me next spring because i always have a good reek on of garlic. It's because I love the taste of it. It's not that I love how I smell, but if you love how that smells, you're more than welcome to come enjoy my smell. So that's another fun one that happens in the spring or different smells that come up too. So you might notice more people sweating, you know, they're doing things outside more. So you might notice or exercising more. We tend to get more motivated in the spring. So if you have a sweat fetish and you love the swell, smell of like people's bodies, like body odor, this and summer are great seasons for you guys. So I'm excited for you guys. And, you know, if you're like, yeah, I have that, but where do I go? You'll literally go anywhere because I tell you, I can walk in the grocery store and I can smell people. So they're everywhere. Enjoy them. <laughs> Enjoy your time this time of year because you're going to get more and more of it. The wild foods also fall into other, um, they can also be kind of on the edge of danger as well. So that fetish of like nearly dying or being, um, you know, this threat of almost dying can be a real turn on. So, you know, I would hope you don't just randomly go out and start eating anything from the forest. It's really important to actually know what you do, what is safe to eat or what isn't safe to eat. But I do know that some people really get off on the daringness of almost dying from things like poisons or, you know, almost dying from like 
I don't know, like driving a car, having sex or driving on a motorcycle and getting it on, like whatever it happens to be that almost could threaten your life. Like you could almost die. People do get turned on by that. So we're going to talk about more springtime fetishes that you may or may not have ever known about. We're going to talk about them after this commercial break. Are you secretly a voyeur, wondering what's going on in other people's sex lives? What if now is the time for a totally different sexual evolution? Are you interested in people who are pioneers of different sexual and pleasurable practices? Lean in now with Melitza Yelenich, where she will entice you and your body to know your own pleasure zone. On the Pleasure Zone radio show with sensual movement artist Melitza Yelenich. You'll receive tools, inspiration, and a foundation to allow yourself to receive more in your sex life, and quite possibly, other areas of your life as well. Listen for The Pleasure Zone with Milica every Monday at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, 7 p.m. Central Time, 6 p.m. Mountain Time, and 5 p.m. Pacific Time on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. Interested in masturbating for money, copulating for consciousness, and pleasuring on purpose? 21 Days of Sexual Magicism with sensual movement artist Melitza Yelenich is an exploration of tools, processes, and actions that you can use to create more for your life, your body, your money inflows, and so much more. Graduated learning for all levels of interest. Learn at your own pace via video classes or join the yearly live class. Take a peek at www.melitzayelenich.com. How wonderful would it be to carry your favorite Inspired Choices Network host with you throughout your day? Well, now you can. Inspired Choices Network now has its very own mobile app. Our free app offers live streaming shows, along with thousands of podcasts and TV episodes. Our shows cover a wide variety of topics. Whether you're waking up with us, carrying us through the day, and taking us to bed with you, we're always here for you to enjoy. We're easy to find. Just search for Inspired Choices Network in the Apple App Store or Google Play Store. This is The Pleasure Zone with sensual movement artist Melitza Yelenich. To participate in the program today, join our live studio audience in our chat room at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. You can also make the choice to ask or comment by email, info at melitzayelenich.com. Now, back to the program. Welcome back, my sweet pleasure seekers. Tonight, we're talking about springtime kinks. There are so many kinks that are really well suited for the spring. And just before we went to break, I mentioned the sneezing, uh, the sneezing fetish. So there's sneezing, nose wiping, all things to do with your nose and snot. And those are some super sexy uh, times for anybody who's got springtime. These are some super sexy times for that and winter as well. So one of the other ones that I'm thinking about and actually, probably the next few in this category are under a category of great things to do outdoors. So if you love to be an exhibitionist and get it on outdoors, this is a great time for it. Probably I would wait a little bit where I live because we have a lot of black flies. So, you know, once the once the black flies are kind of gone or you can you know, just pray you don't get slaughtered by them. That's another thing you could do. (laughs) You can enjoy a lot of things in the springtime outdoors, not just having regular old sex in, in, you know, your backyard uh, to your neighbors and enjoy being uh, voyeurs and they're lucky. So you can be an exhibitionist, but you could also do things like have, you know, especially if you're into water sports, like this is a great time for that too as well as summer and into fall. Like this is just the beginning season of being able to have water sports or water play slash golden showers outside. Some people call them waterfalls. It's a great season to enjoy waterfalls. So take it outside, you know, water the earth, have that, 
have that be a contribution to the earth and a contribution to the person who really loves being peed on uh, or peed for or peed in. So um, I don't recommend peeing inside a vagina, but if you're going to pee in somebody, peeing in their mouth is probably the easiest way to go as long as you don't have a UTI. And I've done shows that were very thorough and based uh, solely for an entire hour talking about urolagia or the fetish for peeing, water play. So you can go back and listen to those uh, if you want to have a full hour of just that. Um, it is a good season, though, for getting it started. And all things like springtime fetishes, so you got your spring dresses, your spring clothes coming out, especially if you like to wear those things um, Maybe you like to wear them privately. Maybe you like to wear them publicly. Maybe you're somebody who uh, in your everyday life is, is you know, maybe you're a businessman in everyday life, but on the weekends, you love to wear spring dresses. So spring dresses are great for you this time of year. That's possible too. So come into the outdoors. One of the other things I was thinking about there's a moss that's uh for those of you who are watching if you wondered what was that that was a little tiny moss that just landed on my nose very cute and that's if you're into things like that so thank you moss for reminding me if, if you do have a kink for uh for playing with bugs and getting bitten by bugs you know just as much as some people might have a phobia of it then any phobia can really be the flip side of it would be a philia. Philia would mean that you're really into it and attracted to it. So paraphilias, those are things that tend to lend to being uh, attracted or aroused by instead of being scared or turned off by. So you could have a philia for, for bugs, uh, you know, whether it's you might have a real turn on from spiders. So that would be like arachnophilia, or you might have a turn on by ants. I don't know what the name of that would be, or mosquitoes. Black, maybe you really enjoy black flies and get turned on by them. If you do, this is a season for it. And I think anything where you, you know, even snakes, um, this is a great season for snakes in the garden too, where you can come across snakes just frolicking around doing their own thing. Usually people who have snake fetishes, though, usually have their own pet snake if they live in a place where they can have that. Having your own flies, I suppose you could manifest those in your home if you had enough stuff lying around that was rotting. Um, I don't recommend that. You know, it's more, it's much more healthy to be able to walk outside and just have them bite you if that turns you on. Because especially if you like scratching, if scratching is like a big fetish for you and gets you totally turned on or scratching other people who have, um, like, if you really love scratching other people's mosquito bites or bug bites, this is also the start of a great season for you. I'm sure that some of you listening are like, wow, Melissa's really gone off the rails here. I'm telling you guys, whatever is out there, the chances are that if, you know, if it exists, there is a fetish for it. I think without... I think there is no exceptions actually to that. So, so it's pretty vast. So some other ones in the category of outdoors are things like grass cutting. You might have not just a fetish for cutting the grass, but like riding the riding lawnmower, um, getting on that riding lawnmower, or maybe you have a fetish for some other gardening tools like the whipper snipper. I don't know what it's really called, but we call it the whipper snipper. I think it's an edger. <laughs> There's that. There's you might have a, you know a fetish for all kinds of gardening tools uh, or any of the implements for tools like pots. You might be really into collecting pots or touching them, like lovely ceramic pots in all different shapes and sizes, or having really large ones that you know you you can confine people in if you're really into the kind of confinement play and this is a you know you'd do, be doing that sort of thing outside in this kind of weather so yeah just bringing in ideas here guys so grass cutting for one there's a few reasons why people enjoy it a sitting on the lawnmower 
if you have a riding lawnmower, it can be highly um, enjoyable. And if you do at the same time love being bit by mosquitoes, then you could be being bit by mosquitoes, scratching your mosquito bites while riding the lawnmower and, you know, the vibration of the lawnmower, but also the smell of the cut grass. So sometimes it's just that smell of fresh cut grass. If it makes your body relax and get turned on, you might have a thing for it. You know, they do make these scents into things for a reason because they kind of get us going and get our hormones going like fresh spring air. It's like, that's, you know, some of the names of fabric softeners. It's springtime fresh. Why? Because we love those smells and they arouse us. So there are a lot of smells that come in the spring that are super arousing. And a lot of, uh, a lot of times we kind of just, probably pass it over and take it for granted. I dare you guys to take a minute and really enjoy any of these things I've mentioned so far on the show and just see if taking the moment to pause and enjoy it actually arouses you. Like, I don't know about you, but if you've ever had to really go pee and like you've held your pee, um, I've done that my whole life. I'm like a pee holder. So there's actually a fetish to you guys for like holding your pee until you are about to pee yourself or you do pee yourself. I've been doing it my, my whole life. Um, that was more of a control thing. <laughs> so, And it is, that's a bit of a fetish of a control thing. So that's a side note for you kids out there. But if you, if you do find like that you hold your pee, you hold your pee. And then when you finally let yourself go pee, that the relief is relaxing and arousing you might have, you might have some connections to having some pee fetish. You might actually want to pee on others too. So, or wet yourself or all kinds of things. So grass cutting is where I, I made some notes here for myself guys, because I just had some random ideas come to my head. It's another one that I was thinking about because I remember this happening to me. I'm like, before my husband and I were dating, my husband was the construction guy on my house. And there he was, I was making this, I was about to make a sandwich one day and he was in the other room and I'm like making a sandwich and he erected a wall in the same time it took me to make lunch, which was about five to 10 minutes. And I was like, what? That was like so freaking sexy. It was ridiculous. So construction fetishes, um, I think, are probably pretty real. Like, I don't know about you, but there's a lot of videos out there about people building things, and I love watching them. It does help my body relax. And you know what the thing is? Is when your body's relaxed, it's it can actually get aroused. When your body's um, in fight or flight and aroused, it's a different kind of arousal where you're not relaxing into receiving or having orgasm you're actually more in fight or flight like a competitive sex or a competitive uh, uh, masturbation with yourself like you have to get rid of the stress of it so if you're already de-stressed then you're turned on it's a very different response in your body all those happy hormones really get going quite fast so construction fetishes could be anything from like I was saying, watching somebody erect a wall to, you know, maybe it's like watching somebody paint a wall or lay ceramics or put in flooring, or there's a reason why construction dudes get, um, you know, why people tend to be like, I'll just put it this way. When I tell people my husband's in construction, I can't tell you how many people go, you're so lucky with this awe of like, oh, I wish my husband or my wife was in construction. There's there's that kind of um, like everybody wants somebody who can build and make a home and they can build a home and you can take care of the home kind of saying like it's kind of in our our genetics for survival so you know having a construction fetish can also be things like the tools that you can use for building and it can be anything from like you know being turned on by saws lathes i have a particular thing for lathes 
love them. I could watch and be around lathe work like all day long, 24 hours a day. Don't own one because if I did, I probably would ignore all my clients. And if I had a, um, a thing where I could do glass blowing, I probably, if I had between a lathe and a glass blowing thing, guys, I'd never be able to work with you. I'd probably give up my show and that would be ridiculous. So I know the things that would get me into like a serious addiction. And those are two things that would get me seriously addicted. Uh, I would probably put things onto a lathe all day long. And that is a great thing to do in the spring when you have a shop that is, if you don't have a shop that's heated and you want to be outside, uh, so good. And yes, glass blowing is freaking amazing. As there was a comment in the chat about it, it is, it's so sexy. It's one of the sexiest things. It's actually a better thing to do in the winter and spring because you're around 2000 degrees of molten glass. It's freaking hot <laughs> being in a glass shop. So yeah, if you're going to do it, do it in the winter. What a great fetish for the winter. So we're going to talk a little bit more about other fun and maybe silly, maybe not so silly fetishes for springtime when we come back. You're listening to The Pleasure Zone here on Inspired Choices Network, and we'll be right back after this commercial. Are you secretly a voyeur, wondering what's going on in other people's sex lives? What if now is the time for a totally different sexual evolution? Are you interested in people who are pioneers of different sexual and pleasurable practices? Lean in now with Melitza Yelenich, where she will entice you and your body to know your own pleasure zone. On the Pleasure Zone radio show with sensual movement artist Melitza Yelenich, you'll receive tools, inspiration, and a foundation to allow yourself to receive more in your sex life and quite possibly other areas of your life as well. Listen for The Pleasure Zone with Milica every Monday at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, 7 p.m. Central Time, 6 p.m. Mountain Time, and 5 p.m. Pacific Time on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. This is The Pleasure Zone with sensual movement artist Milica Yelenich. To participate in the program today, join our live studio audience in our chat room at InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. You can also make the choice to ask or comment by email info at melitzayelenich.com now back to the program welcome back my sweet pleasure seekers for those of you who are joining now uh, you might have missed some of the the kinks we were talking about some springtime kinks and got a few more that popped to mind while i've been talking so we've talked about all kinds of different varieties of things if you happen to have a kink or a fetish that you feel like ashamed about and you just need to say it to get it off your chest to admit it to yourself so that you can move through life and it's like your big ask on the planet and you need to say it to someone if you need to say it to someone just book a time with me you can go over to my website militsayelenich.com that's m-i-l-i-c-a-j-e-l-e-n-i-c.com and you can just go book a conversation time with me. So sometimes it just helps to get some of that weight off your chest. And you know what? You're probably not that unusual. And getting that time in so that you can, you know, actually enjoy yourself, that's great. If you do have a really, if you do have a kink that is related to springtime and I haven't mentioned it at all on the show, even by the end of the show, and you'd love to share it on any of the platforms that have comments, please put it in your com in the comments if you like. If you don't want to share it publicly, go over to my website, which I mentioned just a minute ago, and send me a message. Let me know. I'm curious. As actually how I ended up doing a show about belly buttons was because I had a listener tell me about uh, the belly button uh, fetishist in their life. So that was really helpful. And it actually helped a lot of people. So do not be shy. Let me know. I love to create content for you guys that you enjoy and that assists you. That's what I'm here for. I love contributing to you guys and I love your feedback. So please do write to me through my website, melitsayelenich.com. Uh, so yeah, or, you know, melitsa.jelenich.mj at gmail.com. That's in the faster way to get me. It's the same link, but, you know, you can just Gmail me. 
All right. So, yeah, construction is what we left on. Mm, I love construction. I don't know. I could watch like bricks being laid. I could watch pipes being put in the ground. Uh, there's a lot of things I find pretty hot. So if you are are like me and just like watching things be built is pretty sexy, check out some, you know, regular videos on that. But it can also be the person. Sometimes it's the, the person doing it is that makes it hot too. So definitely construction can be pretty kinky. One of the, especially if you're like building your own sex room, now that is like kink on top of kink. Good times. So another, a few things that came into mind were things that might be more playful and childlike, but not with children. I want to be clear. This is not about pedophilia it is not a fetish. That is a, that is a crime. So uh, things like you might really get turned on by are things like skipping rope or bouncing a ball, things that you did as a kid that you just got, got carried away with that now with, when you go to do it as an adult, you're like, ooh, I really kind of like this. It's kind of tantalizing. Um, I love, love, love skipping as a kid. I could skip for hours. Uh, I don't have a skipping rope now, but who knows? I might have a skipping fetish. I have no idea. And um, I did have an avid listener say spanking because you know what his answer to everything is spanking and i love that and i won't name you <laughs> either unless you want me to next time if you listen to this episode and you're like you can name me next time i will so you know spanking is an all seasonal kind of fun thing i'm just going to throw it out there but i did want to mention that i did get a response that spanking would be good and that's his answer to everything and i think that's adorable so uh, spanking kind of does fall under like um, punishment, childhood punishment kind of stuff like that. Um, what else do we have? Yeah, so skipping, ball, playing ball, uh, anything to do with outdoor sports. You know, if you're really into balls in a hole, golf is great. You know, however you want to interpret the balls in a hole, there's so many ways to do that. Also things like kind of dressing more spring-like, like, like wearing certain hats like some guys have super fetishes for baseball hats and or like running shoes so they happen to have a lover with like a baseball hat and running shoes they might be just like done done to doodle you know whether you're I, I think that happens more in men but it does happen in women as well so and and I'm just going with uh two there but guys just know that I'm always including everyone uh, no matter how you like gender identify, you're all included, even whatever baseball hat and running shoes you're wearing. So, um, yeah, so under that playful summertime, springtime fun, I also thought about things I like to do as a kid that, you know, that could, because as I was saying, anything could be a fetish, riding a bicycle. I don't know if you guys know this, but historically there there were uh, women who were like warned against riding bicycles in the, I think it was eight, 1880s, 1890s, something like that, saying that it would cause hysteria or miscarriages or all kinds of uterine problems and vulvar problems and amazing. <laughs> they were really concerned about the health of women's crotches in relation to what they would be able to do and produce with them via riding a bike and how many rebellious women got out there and did it anyway. And they just rode their bikes and their vulvas survived and apparently we all lived to tell the tale. There are other ones as well, uh, I would think for springtime, whether it's things that you're riding on. I mean, that's pretty sexy. Springtime is a great time for horse riding. So some people get off really on rot not having sex with a horse i'm not saying that i'm saying like the speed of riding a horse that might be your thing um again it falls into the same category to me as what pedophilia would fall under don't have sex with animals they didn't consent um but you might really enjoy just going for horse rides some it's that is a kind of uh sticky situation now thank you for listening to the pleasure zone with sensual movement artist milica yelenich the Pleasure Zone returns next Monday at 8 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. Central, 
6 p.m. Mountain and 5 p.m. Pacific on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. We hope you'll join us. Until then, have the best week of your life by choosing to be turned on and tuned in to your body.